y how much consider ahí voy, ahí voy. Muchas gracias. Good morning. How are you? There are people who didn't say anything. It's a wonderful day in Mexico. To me, waking up in this wonderful city that I love and where I lived for almost a year in 28, uh, it is always a privilege and a blessing. Just like Matt has said, uh, Our topic today cannot be just uh, 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 an Asardo's experience. In 25 minutes, I would like to give you like a pill about a tool that could change our lives and that actually transformed mine. I got to this topic about uh, mindful leadership, exponential mindful leadership, because I had a family full of suicide and schizophrenia where there was a taboo and a total stigma about the topic. And at 15 years old, I saw myself in a need. Uh, after seeing my dad in a psychiatric institution, he was a this detached zombie. I had to make that choice of saying, what will I do from the, for the rest of my life? Because I want to be a fully uh, productive person, controlling my mind and my emotions and my life. So I needed to become a researcher of the mi human mind and the brain and how not to be like my father when I grew up. Something that at first started with like a betrayal for my father. Thank God, nowadays I celebrate him and I consider him my hero because he was the inspiration for me to break a pattern in my family, which had I not broken, it would be eternalized from fear, from that mindset that you cannot change something inside of you because you inherited it. So with leadership, we can build an empire, but not just an outward empire, but also an inward empire. Without leadership, we are astray in our life. Mindfulness is a word that is in trend right now, but it is completely scientific. I'm not telling you one. For us today, Harvard Business Review, Oxford Economics, and the biggest scholar uh, schools in the world are researching how humans can become more resilient, more productive, and happier through the study and self-cultivation from the inside out and also exponential. This is the third concept of this con uh, of this uh, method that we're working in our academy. And it has to do with technology and the world that you're developing in, which is the, mo the world of advertisement. It is more and more exponential. So those are three words and three concepts that we will be studying and developing through the next uh, 25 minutes. So I would like to start with a question for you. And the question is, How are you today? I would like to hear an answer. How are you today? Good. Okay. Well, before that, I see that some some people are in autopilot. Some have not landed here. Let's do the checkup, like a laxative, to see how much constipation we have. So look at the faces around you. Y busquen signos de estreñimiento. So signs of constipation. That person who doesn't have a smile, who's not clear on their head, on their foreheads, and they have, they're frowning, and people who are on their cell phones, they're not here, they're not present. They drag their, themselves into this room. And so this 25 minutes I'm going to share with you. I don't want you just to be here in, in your body, but I want you here in your mind as well. So my question is today, ¿Están conscientes o tienen la mente llena? ¿Cómo es? I cannot say it like this because I would say, is your head full, is your, is your mind full or uh, are you relaxed, serene, serene and peaceful and aware of where you are? But we always do things in autopilot. We take a shower. Uh, it should be the most mindful moment in our day, but we're thinking of everything we're having to do during the day or in our troubles with our woman or with our husband or with our children. We are not present at the moment. So how? what is a mindful? It, ha it is full of the past and it tends to be depression, constant depression, or one that has a lot of future but too much stress and anticipation which is translated scientifically into anxiety. 
So what is it in your head? What makes your mind, your, your mind be full? Now, you being seated here without anything getting your attention, your, your awareness or your mindfulness off of this topic. And there's a very important um, requ requisite here. You need not to have a prejudice. That's very complicated because always we always have a narrator. It is like a it's not it's not enough to be on the front line. You need a narrator to narrate every single play just like you were if you were watching TV and not at the stadium. That's mindfulness and that's important. Why? Because look at everything that happens every minute and on the internet and I will be sharing with you 25 minutes. Well, we have one minute. These are the statistics of the whole globalized exponential world we live in today is happening. And you cannot change that. On the contrary, it is happening with you in, with your, without your intervention. So my question is, how much do we value every single moment in our life? Those are minutes that we will not get back. They are irreplaceable. So it can all of this can happen in one minute. But if you stop for a minute, you can understand that you can say yes to someone you love. In a minute, you can have a newborn baby after several minutes of suffocation and struggle. But he was born in that minute. And that is the minute that is recorded for the rest of your life. When were you born? you have an exact minute. So it's 60 seconds where you can be in your mind and live a paradise or a turbulent, constantly turbulent chaos that does not stop. Why is this so important? Because last year when I was creating this concept, I got a news. Uh, for most of you who don't know me, I was a journalist. Well, I will keep being a journalist. I worked in the, for CNN in Spanish. Um, I was an anchor for an interview show that was called Cala, my last name, until 2016, where I took a new path as a life and business strat a strategic person uh, in this mindfulness. I was worried about giving the news, the craziness the, this world is being immersed in. And your influence is one that I care about the most. Last year, we had to give a piece of news that I hope for advertising is enlightening. There was this girl who was 20-something years from one of the most important Jap Japanese uh, advertising firms, took her life due to wor uh, workload excess. She had 159 hours of work. Uh, in Japan, they have karochin, it's death due to a, a, an excess load of work. They have a word specifically for that. They, are, they have a culture, the culture of hyper productivity. What, what is the price? They are not aware, they're not present in their life. They're like a headless chicken trying to get to objectives and getting uh, their goals done. So in this world where you are, creativity is a differentiation pattern, yes or no? right? How can you be more creative if your mind is constantly turbulent? If the big ideas always reach you when you are in a void, when the lightning descends because there's peace and there's calm. I learned last year that if we do not reflect on how to live in the next 50 years, we are going to die medicated. And my question that I want to ask you is, what would you rather have, a medicated life or a meditated life? Because people, some people need to take sleeping pills because they have insomnia, but maybe that pill it just gets them dizzy, and so they need to take another one to wake up. And as you see, some people are depending on so many chemicals that are altering their emotional system, but they're not finding a solution to the causes that bring it about. Uh, Buka, how many of you know Buka? Buka, raise your hands. Five, six people in the room. I love that because we have a, a very big room of opportunity here. Buka is an acronym, an acronym that is uh, from the 90s. I went to Singularity University in their executive uh, executive program they have in Silicon Valley, and they told me there that 
the world that we live in has four characteristics. That buca is not done with sambuca or mezcal or tequila or margaritas. For the people who have an agitated life and they have a deadline and they need to deliver, uh, maybe a, wine, a, piece, a glass of wine will do the trick. But I don't think so. Buca means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Do you know who created this concept? The uh, US Army strategic uh, uni uh, executives. When the socialist bloc disappeared, I lived in Cuba. I lived that, you know, 20 years and then the, the director comes, It's uh, the communist bloc is over, so we have two subjects that are going to disappear. And so we have communism and dialectic materialism. And I was like, wow, what am I gonna do with those two years of garbage that I got in my brain? That's useless because the world changed. And you know, the US strategic said, uh, this is, we have a new enemy and they don't know, you know, they, they don't have a polarization of two blocks. So they wisely said that starting in the nineties, the world was going to be more uncertain, more volatile, more complex from the geopolitical perspective. And tell me if that is not a galloping uh, reality that every day we increase and increase and increase. So VUCA started in the 90s, very simple. But then we have VUCA Square. Why? Because we got the internet. We were all connected, completely connected with the internet. And then with social media, VUCA is now exponential because it gave everybody a voice. So now everyone can be a brand, an influence, anyone can amplify a global leadership so that they can follow him or her because of something differential that they do. So if we live in Buca, we need to understand that our brain and our education, which I call more domestication, just like uh, Miguel Ruiz does that in his four agreements, we were domesticated to fit in this society we live in, but we were domesticated with the old fashioned incremental mindset so our brain knows to how to help how to calculate 30 linear steps so I say how much do I till I reach the end of the stage I can say oh it's 10 steps linear steps but what are the exponential steps those are the ones that we take and whenever you take a step you twice fold what you do. So one step is two, then four, then 16, and so on and so forth. Tell me if your brain can keep a track of this calculation. It's like 30 exponential steps give 26 times, uh, uh, go 26 times around the world. And our brain cannot work with that. We are not prepared to do with what it the brain itself did when it digitalized things. So when things, or when material things were dematerialized after becoming a binary code of one and zero, which we call digitalization, that moment our brain started depending for, on artificial intelligence or the machines that we created to do better calculations than we do. So we live in a VUCA world. It's volatile, complex, ambiguous, and uncertain with two mindsets or with two mind models or thought models in this world where we were raised, where we have step by step very smoothly and very softly, just like the Despacito song. And the world that we created with digitalization and it differentiates the very latest innovations that everything that comes about should be digital. That red curve has a moment where we are just desperate when we are incubating ideas. Why? Because when you incubate and create prototypes, you need to take time for trial and error for the essay not, not to work, that you need to look for a path and the results don't seem to be working and people just drop out. It happens here every day in our brains when we are incubating a great idea, but we think it's not gonna work because of how different it is. And so we drop it out, but other people can just bring it out and continue with it and say, oh, how, 
how did he get it? And you thought it was impossible. You know, in, in our brains, we need to do, as we go linearly, we need to have an internal innovation and invention lab that can take the chance of not taking failure as a concept to fear, but to understand that failure is just a rehearsal for learning. So what are what is happening today? The iPhone moment. This is the uh, Steve Jobs memorial here, or um, you, you know that iPhone changed the world because iPhone made a promise for everyone as consumers to say, this is a product that is never finished. We have iPhone one, but be, be ready because in uh, the next year we will have the second one. We are working on the next features. iPhone is an unfinished product and everything else has replicated that model of saying, oh, you have this card today, but then 2018, you know, you should wait because it's going to be way better. That other one is going to be very old in the next 12 months. And now we live in a world that whether or not you know this, it doesn't matter. Knowledge has a cost, but ignorance has a bigger cost. So nowadays, every industry is being developed at a scale of innovation where exponentialization and dig digitalization are determining the agenda. So you may see here how many industries are beyond the iPhone, like agile uh, management, 3, uh, 3D imprinting, big data, and cybersecurity. Nobody ever thinks of uh, getting a company without investing antivirus and locking for people not to hack your information and your values. That is precisely what is happening in our world. And here I ask you, do you want to be creative and healthy for the next 50 years? Or do you want to be extinct just like dinosaurs? Because near the Gulf of Mexico, according to scientists, 55 million years ago, a meteor, a meteorite impacted the Earth, struck the Earth. And the impact was so big that it changed the chemistry of the air that dinosaurs breathe that 65 years ago made dinosaurs the dominating uh, race. It was not mammals like us. It was them. But in hours, weeks, and months, it's hard to determine because none of us was there to just do the account. It extended because their respiratory system was not able to adapt. So my question here is, how do we adapt to the changes we haven't even imagined? They will come and arrive in the next 50 years if we have a brain that is constantly pushing us and programming us with fear to the unknown to the new things, to whatever is not explored. A brain that has within itself three in one, and the most primal, primary one, which is a reptilian brain, it is a prehistorical one, but it's still there. It's still here today. It tells you, you know, be careful. That's a new idea. Be careful because it could be wrong. So the only way that we have to go with the next changes is to realize that exponentiality has brought to our lives less time to recover from a disruption for the next one, to the next one. So let's say in 1974, uh, you know, first uh, advertising block, then first, ag first advertisement agency, and then it was like the gremlins. They started multiplying everywhere, every in every corner of the world. Then in... 1891, they start the Kodak branding. It is an icon in the advertisement industry, but it is also a business school icon for not allowing innovation because Steve Samson created the first model of the digital camera and the board of directors of Kodak, they said, oh, hide that uh, model. We are the kings of paper and print. And then Instagram in 2012, it's not a coincidence that it was sold to Facebook for a billion dollars, while well, it was in the same year where Kodak went bankrupt. That is the difference between an old-fashioned 
the thought model versus the exponential, a new model of thought. And then, if you keep going uh, to, on the adaptations uh, that technology has brought about, technology got to the new media, radio, TV. And by the way, people said when uh, TV uh, came out, they said that the radio was going to disappear, but it muted, it relocated, and then it coexisted. And then in the 60s, psychology started studying consumers. But studying consumers is not studying as if they're, they were a machine, but it means studying the human being because we are all consumers or, or advertisement strategists. So we are both in the 90s. Advertisement industry did not what where to go, did not know where to go. Sometimes when I go to the restroom, you know, I can close my eyes and say, this is a mindful moment. Of course, because I'm looking at a screen that is trying to sell me everything. And this is an old one. Actually, uh, some of them uh, are at the level that you need to just look. You know, there's no escape. But if you close your eyes, you go like, ah, oh, this is a mindful moment. It's good to just take this liquid out of my system. So now in the 2000s, look what this century, new century brought for the advertisement industry. It was a mind field of opportunities, but also a mind of uh, constant distraction, the niche of social media where the influencers are, where we want to bet on because they are the niche of market that we are interested in, and we're not just shooting blanks without knowing where we're shooting. So that is happening in the last 30 or 40 years. So the reflection I want to make here today is if we don't change our internal paradigm, our software is going to eat us up. Technology is going to eat us up. It's going to make us its slave. We are going to be hand tied from the same progress that we have been able to create as a human, as a as a human race. And also, people will have to go see you to a museum, just like a like a dinosaur. Oh, they were very smart in the 90s, but you know they weren't able to adapt. They were just stuck in the Hall of Fame of the Advertising Week. 30 years ago, this person was a genius. And now, they don't know anything because they couldn't adapt. So the concept of exponential mindful leadership is if you want an, an empire outwards, you need to cultivate an inward empire because your growth and leadership and reaction capacity skills are in your conscious of knowing how you evaluate and observe your own mind. So, leadering. Who is a leader in this room? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Unless you have a, any mobility issue, or if you raised your hand just like an amoeba, you know, by instinct, if someone left your hand down, I don't know what you're doing in, your, in this room, because this is a top leader's and top experts meeting in this industry. So the first thing you need to know is leading is not just sending someone else, but how to manage your emotions, your way of thought and deciding. It's the concept of leadership. It's towards you, not towards others, pe other people. And then the the ability to motivate to motivate and drive a team who is impacted and inspired by you. But that is the second step of leading. I have this comparison between the traditional leader and the mindful exponential leader. Why? Because according to Oxford Economics and Harvard Business Review, these, uh, these data were taken from those respected uh, academic world publications. When we talk about traditional leadership, it is cognitive. It's a cognitive concept. Do you remember that in many of the big corporations, when you were hiring a, an executive, from last century, you see how it changed. What did you do with people? You did an IQ test. Do you do that today? No, because companies don't care anymore on how much or you know or you don't know. What they care about is how you manage your knowledge, your skills and, and, and abilities of being able to interpret anything that the, uh, someone else does and creating a, a vision of a teamwork. And that is not achieved with IQs. 
if you see the history of the creator of Alibaba, the little Chinese person, he was rejected 10 times by Harvard. In another time of history, he would have said, oh my God, I'm a loser. Harvard rejected me. And you know, he said, you know, get Harvard from wherever you want to do. I'm going to do with my intelligence, whatever best I think. So he created Alibaba without Harvard because time changed in the world. So this is what happens to a traditional leader who does not invest inwards. His vision is always outwards. I had the chance of interviewing the people, you know, in CNN and they say, oh, this person is the wealthiest uh, man in, in his, in his uh, country. And I'm like, oh, why is he using a cane? You know, this, uh, he's young. And, you know, he left his health building his company, you know. Our, our model here is mindfully exponential. We understand that what is in here is more important than your tablet and your iPhone and your computer all together. And so I ask myself, like, how does most of us not dare come with our cell phone without any charge? Right? Our most, uh, our biggest need here is to ask if there's Wi-Fi. Oh, how come you don't? That's ludicrous, you know, if you don't have. So who is aware of that intention to improve their Wi-Fi? Which is what comes from inside. That energy that you emanate from your pineal gland, which is the one that receives everything that you are. So we brush our teeth, but do we brush our minds? Do we reset our minds in aware of how many files we have and the antivirus we have and, you know, we purge that? This is our master computer. This is where your big ideas and your decisions come from. Everything else is just an accessory. And for most of us, really, we have not realized, we are not aware that technology is dominating our agenda. And it's not us who is using technology to maximize and optimize our agenda, our calendar. The other day, someone asked me if I did something about time management. And I said, no, it's impossible for you to manage time. You cannot stretch time. What you can handle or manage is your priorities. If you are able to handle your priorities, you can handle your time. These are the principles of mindful leadership, uh, mindful exponential leadership. So it's uh, pra um, proactive, empathetic, innovator, and conscious. Why? Because if we are not aware of what we're doing, we are subject to the VUCA world. We are one more trapped in this volatile, volatility and ambiguity that I've told you, which is what we're living here today. I have an antidote against VUCA. And it's not, don't be an oak, be a bamboo. Why? Because it has strong roots. Those are your principles and life values. You sit, you know, your mission, your values, they don't change maybe humility, uh, transparency, service, integrity. They don't have to change during your lifetime. What is going to change? The situations that you face. So everything else will have to be more flexible and adaptable. And the bamboo is a symbol in the Eastern culture of spirituality and mindfulness and presence and flexibility and solidarity of coexistence as well, because we know here that we are a constellation. No one is a single genius. The biggest intelligence is the one that is collaborative and, and collective. Bamboo doesn't grow by itself. If you find one single bamboo stick, is because you went to the China, Chinese town. You know, you bought one that they just chopped off and they put it, you know, in water, and this will bring you a fortune. You should get it. But if you go to nature, bamboo always is collective. It lives in the forest, and that's why it's so strong. It's anti-seismic. Japanese people know that if there is an earthquake, they can go to the bamboo forest, and, you know, they are safe. This is a lot of information for 20 minutes, but I want you to leave here with the feeling that the more you invest in self-presence and self-cultivation, you're maximizing your growth opportunities.
So if with volatility you have more vision and with uncertainty you search for more comprehension, you are counteracting the VUCA effects. And that's why we are working with a method and a life and a leadership method that uses my uh, last name as an acronym, which is Constant Learning for Leadership in Action. Why? Because there are a lot of people who were sold this Chinese uh, tale saying, oh, you get a big degree and then that degree is going to get you to the top. They're going to hire you. You will have money and you will feel successful and then you will be happy. That's a Chinese tale. There's a lot of people in Latin America, uh, you know, I'm sorry for the language, but uh, they take a lot of crap and they say, oh, uh, you know, uh, master or missus, you know, sir or mister. That value is in their career, you know. It's like, when did you graduate? Like 30 years ago? And then your social value is because you have a bachelor's degree here? You know, nowadays everything changed. The world has changed. In fact, there are a lot of people who are living better lives without a degree because they self-taught focusing on what they need in order to create. So this method is talking about education as a primary foundation for self-cultivation, the need of creating the wellness and the culture that you need to have for the future, the constant learning for leadership in action. And then the last one is very important. Why? Because without action, the only thing we have is just a source of knowledge, but that is not set into practice. So the advertising industry, I was fascinated by it since I was a teenager. Why? Because they make you dream. They direct your attention to things that you're not capable of thinking of. They talk to you from a standpoint of a storytelling that creates a need that you didn't even know you had inside of you. So I want to tell you something. It is very important to consider the paradigm, not just with which we create advertising for others, but the one that we live with. Because unfortunately, many of us as human beings have the wrong paradigm, which is the one that is uh, seen before you believe. You know, if I see it, I'll believe it. Show me the facts and then I'll believe. And I say, if you don't change that paradigm and invest in believing before seeing, there's nothing disrupting, nothing new, nothing that is not there today that you can create. Because it, you need to have that fit in your mind so it, it can manifest in your life, right or wrong. iPhone was not there. It was created in the minds of the creative people who did it, who made it. And then those products that leave us in awe, we ask ourselves, how has the human being been able to just get there, you know? Mindfulness means being a piece and looking inside of us. It's taking like 30 seconds and say, how is my mind doing? How are my thoughts doing? I have a narrator that is constantly labeling what I lived, what I, I'm going to live, or what is happening today. And believe me, that improves our health. It makes us more productive. It optimizes our time, creates better, significant relationships with others. And just to finish, I had a word game here that has to do with the ad week. Because if your mind is full, you're mad, you know? But it's almost crazy. But if your mind is serene, you have a potentially full mind of new ideas for new advertising and new copies and new strategies and new campaigns. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for the opportunity of serving and being able to inaugurate this first event here in Mexico. And also thank you very much, Advertising Wits, for being part of Partner Foundation, which is our partner, Ismael Cala Foundation. And we organize the Latino Impact Summit in New York. And we want all of you to be part of this movement that seeks to improve the life conditions and progress condition in our region, which is Latin America. And you can be key 
agents to promote those development values with awareness and positivism. Have a great, great day and smile a lot today so that just your day is not just productive, but also happy and unforgettable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hola, hola. Ahora sí, sí. Sí, pero como me, me sonó una, gen, una, una alarma, 